Good morning. Uh, my name is John Haran uh, from HMC. Uh, we're a market research company based in Belfast. Um, we were recently commissioned by Invest and I uh, to prepare a report on opportunities for Northern Ireland suppliers uh, in the GB ROI data center construction uh, market. Um, we just completed that report and um, we've been asked today to give uh, a brief overview of the report, um, provide some background uh, into the sector, some of the trends that, that, that we discovered and and how suppliers uh, in, in Northern Ireland can, can, access, can access that market. Uh, so that's what we're going to cover today. Um, the report itself is about 60 or 70 pages long, so I've just picked out some highlights and some points which I think uh, will help to, to give a flavour of what, what the market can offer. I mean, I suppose start talking a little bit about the, the data centre market itself. and um, We all have seen uh, how data and the cost of data and the importance of data has has grown over the last 10, 20 years. Um, they say today that uh, data is the new oil. Uh, I'm not so sure about that, but um, certainly, you know, at, at, in every in every area, you're seeing data more and more data being created. Whether it's in uh, Amazon deliveries and uh, whether it's um, in people using Netflix, whether it's um, customers tracking your every move to try and figure out what to sell you next. Or whether it's simply people on iPhones that are taking 10, 10 pictures when when only one was required, but either way, you're seeing that that uh, increase in the amount of data, and that that's then driving this this whole need to store data and to store it effectively and and, uh, and in a way that it can be accessed quickly. Um, and if you look at look at the, the first point in the slide, which is basically you know in 2020, the global market for for data centers was some over 18 billion US dollars. That includes both the, the 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 facility itself and then the technology that goes into it. But it's still, it just gives an indication of of the size of the market. And um, then also, you know, in, in the next four years, it's predicted, estimated that in the Republic of Ireland and and uh, GB, over 10 billion US dollars will be spent um, in building new data centres uh, because the market is just expanding so quickly. And, so, and as you know, in terms of even social media, just as the amount that's been accumulated and uh, the need to find ways to, to store that. Uh, it's estimated there's currently over 500 data centres in the UK and Ireland. Um, um, in the in the UK, primarily around London, uh, and in Ireland, primarily around, around Dublin. So it's traditionally would have been the the, the centres for uh, for data centres, uh, because in the UK, uh, the the major users of data centres would have been at the banks, and of course they're they're based in London, so that that's why they were there and in Dublin because that's the major centre. Um, there's at the moment there's about 38 data, data centres with planning approval. So again, it gives a, an indication that the, the market has grown, but it's also continuing to expand quite quickly. Uh, so there's 38 data centres that have planning approvals. So they haven't started construction yet, but planning has been granted on, on the data centres. And as I said the growth is a number of reasons for the growth, and you will all know these already. I mean, low latency was one of the big uh, drivers for data centers. But traditionally, most data was held close to the customer or close to, to the owner of the data. Um, so you kept it on premise in, in, in your computers or, or, or whatever or in local storage. Um, but And the reason you you, did, you wanted it close because you want to access it quickly. So because telecoms speeds were, were, were relatively slow, um, it was better to keep it on, on premises. But as that look, as data has become speeds have come faster, and you know today we have super, you know super fast broadband, <laughs> at least at least some of us have, um, and five G for for the mobile. The faster the data becomes, the more the the more uh, remote you can have have the data and still be able to access it quickly. So that's been a big driver in terms of this moving movement of data uh, from on premises to to remote locations. Another big driver, particularly for corporations, has been cost reduction. Uh, you know, if you have data on premise, you've got to have people to manage it. You've got to buy the kit, um, and uh, it's a very ineffective way to, to to manage data, particularly when data is not your primary business and you just you just want to have access to the data. Um, so that's been another driver. And then the final point, ironically, is risk mitigation. Um, I suppose most people thought that the safest place to have data was close to close to you and, 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 and keep it on premise. But the reality is, with cybersecurity becoming ever more important and the cost of cybersecurity and the, how quickly new threats are coming up, it's nearly impossible for companies to, to manage that risk. Um, um, so it, it becomes much better to give to somebody who's an expert at, at managing data. And similarly with innovation, 
Um, the speed of, of processors is changing all the time. New methods of storage are changing all the time. Really, it's almost impossible for, for, for companies to keep up with that. So it's better to give it to somebody who actually can manage that technology upgrades and, and, and keep keep your data in in uh, environment that is the most up to date and, and has the highest speeds. Um, and the final thing is consumers. I mean, we, we all know that um, uh, we're using more data, we're accessing more data, we want it more quickly, you know, gone are the days when you were happy to have, um, you know, uh, download a movie and then watch it. Now we want to watch the movies in real time. We don't want, we want to, 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 to see it as, uh, we don't want to be waiting, waiting for things to happen. And then e-commerce, again, with uh, the increase in e-commerce, it's, it's creating this huge opportunity for our requirement for, for data. And that's all driving, driving this market. In terms of data center trends themselves, uh, I just give you a little, I mean, we went into quite a bit of detail in terms of how these trends are, are affecting um, uh, the market, but I picked out some which I thought were pretty relevant from, from the point of view of a supplier, particularly an engineering supplier uh, into the sector and, and would be relevant. First point is in terms of the data center market itself. I mean, it is quite complex in terms of, and it's very simple, it's simply a way of storing data, uh, but the way at which, which it's, data, it's, it's stored uh, it is quite diverse. Uh, at the sort of the smaller end, you have what's called co-location data centers, and those were the first sort of um, um, move by people to move their their servers out of their own premises and into somebody else's premises that was could manage it uh, more effectively. And so, a co-location center it would be a center where the, the the kit is all owned by the by the, the company who's who owns the data and simply managed on on specific on specialized premises. Um, of course, that's morphed can now into cloud computing, where you don't actually put the, own, the the company who owns the data doesn't need to own the servers, and that's owned by the cloud uh, providers, whether it's Google or whether it's Amazon or Microsoft or or, whoever, or Apple, whoever it happens to be. Um, and then the real at the top, you've got that is hyperscale, and these are the ones, these are the Facebooks and the Googles of this world who have huge amounts of data, and their hyperscale centers are large, both in terms of their physical size. In terms of the speed that they operate at, and, and in terms of the amount of data that, that they process, one of the key considerations, uh, and again, it's something that, that offers opportunity for supplier, is cost. Um, the cost of data centers, um, it's, it's slightly different from from other commercial premises or industrial premises. And they, they estimate that in, in in a factory, for instance, uh, the the twenty year uh, build and operate cost. Um, the bill part of that is about 45%. In other words, 50% of the cost of a 20-year cost uh, of ownership of a building is in the, is in the bill phase of it. Whereas in data centers, is, it's very, very different. In a data center, the cost part is about 20%, and 80% is actually in the operational side of it. Um, and operations basically is getting getting power in and getting getting heat out. Uh, so that's, that's a big difference. Um, and a lot of what goes into the design of data centers is not about the physical building, but it's about how you control uh, things like heat and power, and, and how you design it to make sure that it's cost effective over that over the operating operating life of, of the data center. And that leads into one of the things areas that which I think is is an area where suppliers can create some real competitive advantage, and that's in design and innovation. Um, design and innovation in in terms of the ability to 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 help to reduce those 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 operating costs. And one area where where we saw a lot in terms of doing the research, we saw a lot of interest in this uh, building innovation modeling. And I'm sure a lot of you will already know, both know about this. I mean, it's common in in the uh, building uh, industry at the moment, but particularly in, in data centers, being able to model over the, the, the life of the, of the building, what the costs are likely to be is a big part of that. And for suppliers who can actually feed into that and have the technology and the design capability to feed into that process, I think there's a major competitive advantage to be, to be had in that. Type skills are also important. Uh, as you know, as I said earlier on, the amount of data and, and the, the use of data is increasing exponentially. Um, so things like budgeter build is very important. Um, and any way that you can help to reduce the time to getting the data center up and running will, will, will help. Um, green and sustainable. Again, the big data center operators, they want to be seen to be uh, eco-friendly. So that's a big issue. Intelligent monitoring, uh, again, for, for companies that are into facilities management. Uh, very much nowadays is about having nobody on premises and all of it done remotely, and also having uh, management of both the technical assets and the facilities. Typically, historically, we've done separately. One company would manage the facility and the other one would manage the, the, the technical assets, but they're looking for companies who can actually do both. 
site selection I mentioned that both most data centers traditionally were built uh, in high areas, areas of high population. But that's changing as well with low latency and the ability to, to build in remote locations where you can get cheaper costs and um, access to labor. And then finally, edge computing, which is ironic given that there's been a push to build bigger and bigger data centers with more and more data. Nowadays, actually, even with low latency, um, with what's happening coming coming out like Internet of Things and automated uh, um, um, automa automa automobile, automobiles, um, this is creating um, an a, a need to have processing very close to the end user. Uh, if you have an autonomous vehicle and you're coming to set of traffic lights, you need to make decisions very, very quickly. And even with the high, lowest latencies you can get at the moment, you need that close to the to the to the car and to the end user. So, what you're seeing is a, a move to create edge smaller data centers, but closer to where the process where the the decisions are being taken. So, yeah, that's creating opportunities for for suppliers to supply into these 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 smaller data centers. As part of the, 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 the a lot of the work in, in 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 the report was looking at well actually what does the supply chain opportunity look like um, what where is the opportunity um, and how, how how can you access it so if you look at this and I put, try to put a, as much in this one slide as possible so apologies if it's a little bit confusing but if you look at the the top right um, this is a data center uh, supply chain segmentation model and really what we did was we took a typical uh, a, I took a bomb for a, t a typical um, uh, data center uh, for to build and operate a typical data center, uh, and then we took the, the key elements of that bomb in terms of the the, the elements, and we looked at it in terms of the, the how much what, what was the relative uh, cost in 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 that bomb to try and see which which, which were the most lucrative in terms of 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 the uh, the amount of work that was available, and then we we plot that against the competitive strengths as we saw it of the Northern Ireland sector and uh, Northern Ireland supply chain. Um, now, individual companies will have different competitive advantages. So, uh, but this is trying to give an overall sense of of where the opportunities lay. And as we look at it, you will see, and it's probably not surprising that, that where the where we saw the opportunities, and that's if you look at the top right hand corner, um, uh, areas such as HVAC and construction and, and things like that. That they are they are they they constitute a fairly significant part of the building materials. Um, there are areas where we think Northern Ireland companies have a very strong uh, competitive, competitive advantage, uh, and uh, we think there those are areas where I think there is real real opportunities. I mean, there's areas across the the, the broader range and things like cabling and, and maintenance and things like that. Um, but I think those ones we talked about, I think, are, are we highlighted there are, are areas where we think there there is real opportunity. Um, at the bottom, I, I've just just show just show put that in some context. Uh, to look at well, what does that mean in terms of the overall bill cost? You see, I put there twenty to thirty pounds for a data center. I uh, typo there, so it should be million. So the typical data center is twenty to thirty million. The bill cost, um, and you see how that's split up between materials, design, project management, and uh, services. So you can see that there's a significant opportunity there. Um, and then finally, just looking at then um, who are the key players? So I mean, who do you have to talk to to get business in this market? Um, and again, we've gone into quite a bit of detail in, in, in the report in terms of how these people interact to each other. In reality, how they interact is very different depending on the project, but you'll see that the key player is obviously the owner. So the owner typically then appoints somebody to actually manage the process, and that is either the architect, the designer, or, or a consultant, and then you the break out below between the different contractors. So um, as part of the project, we put together quite an extensive list of who the key players in the UK and Ireland are. And they typically, as you will expect, the key, key, same guys come up again and again, so we've quite a comprehensive list of, of contacts in, in each of those in each of those areas. In terms of, of then, who should you be talking to? I mean, as I said, we have put together quite an extensive list, but I think some uh, contacts which would be particularly relevant uh, at this stage uh, as, as a starting point. Um, if we look at the, in the, we broke it out into Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, and, and, and GB. In Northern Ireland, these people, you, companies you already know, uh, Graham and Lagan are, are, are in the construction se uh, sector looking at, at projects and have, have delivered projects before, Antrim Electrical and EI Engineering, all companies that, that, that are involved in the sector. Republic of Ireland is quite interesting because there's, um, the companies we put in there, and they're not all of them, but they're just a selection of, of companies in the site who built a very strong reputation in data center uh, market, primarily by, by and they don't only do data centers, but it's an area where, where they began a strong reputation. Um, 
But they've leveraged the, the, the Irish market, the built capability, which they've then taken into the export market, which I think is another area which would be interesting to look at in the future would be how you can use Ireland or the UK as to, to get build capability that you can then bring to the export market. And then the GB, uh, similarly, companies that, that you could be looking to work with. In terms of actually going into the market and trying to find opportunities, we would make the we would think the following areas are, are, are worth considering in terms of how you would go forward. Um, we would focus on building relationship with the pre primary contractors, which is uh, straightforward enough, and I think is is fairly logical. Target smaller lo co location projects. The smaller projects are not as, as tightly controlled, and I think they offer a better opportunity for to gain experience that you can then bring in into the larger projects. Um, Try to build some competitive advantage. Talked previously about BIM and, and innovation. Uh, I think there is definitely an opportunity. It's one of these these industries where if you can if you can create a technical advantage or design advantage, then you, you it will help you in in, in building on projects. I think collaboration is important in terms of particularly things like build offsite, which it was a key element. And most of what we read is build offsite is something that they're, that people are promoting as as a way to help to to speed up the the, the construction phase. And, um, doing that in collaboration, I think, was helpful. It also, as, as most of you will know, I mean, bidding is an expensive process. So finding ways to share that cost by bidding uh, as part of a, a team, I think, could offer uh, opportunity to bid on stuff that maybe you couldn't otherwise. Tender sites such as Barber ABI are very good sources of information. They'll re they're really the first place to look if you're looking at, at, at potential business in the sector because they offer insights into most of the key projects that are happening at the moment. Uh, Kelly's SAP and, and government is a very important as well. I mean, it's important to mention. I mean, government's a big user of data centers. I mean, they outsource a lot to Amazon and people like that. But the reality is that they are a big user of data and a big store of data. So again, looking at opportunities in, in government, invest in Northern Ireland's info resource center is very useful in terms. They have all the data that you need and all the reports that you need to, to start looking at this. And then finally, attending events such as Data Center World. I think um, a good way to understand what's happening in the market, meet meet key players, and if of course, <laughs> if of course events ever start happening again, but I think things like that, even if it's only virtually, would be would be worth looking at. The final part on on the slide really is just to give you an example of the type of project, and, and again, it just reiterates what what I talked about previously. I mean, this is a project that's live at the moment at seven million pounds. Uh, it's an extension of an existing uh, data center for the PDCG Group, uh, um, and it's in 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 London. Uh, so you can see the breakout there in terms of the, the, who the key, key players are, the client, and then the different key uh, partners in that. And again, you recognize some of those guys. And as I said, the, the same guys crop up again and again in these tenders. Uh, so it would be worth as a first step to start looking at them and start to, to, to build those relationships. So finally, just really just to recap, um, it's a big market, about 10 billion uh, in, in, in capacity to be built over the next four years. Um, there's 27 data centers currently in construction in, across the UK and Ireland. Um, there's 38 data, cent data centers in the pipeline, and these have planning permission. So, you know, there, there's there's a good target there in terms of looking at how I might start supply into them. Um, I think a, a, a good an advantage for Northern Ireland suppliers is that there is already a strong supply chain in Ireland. So, uh, and for tier one, tier two uh, suppliers. Uh, and I think as a starting point is to find a way to, 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 to as a tier, maybe a tier two or a tier three supplier into Irish uh, companies who already gain that experience and have got, got those contacts would be a good uh, entry point and a good channel to get into the market. I think innovation design is definitely a way to differentiate in the marketplace. And that comes through in, in most of the research that we did. Um, most of what we looked at is around the, the actual uh, is uh, the product side of it. But uh, I mean, there is opportunities in planning, design, operate, and maintain. Uh, and they're all functions that are required. They're all functions that are, are being sourced. Uh, and again, it's also about finding ways to differentiate yourself. Um, and finally, the point I, I made earlier on was that um, it can be a great opportunity to build a platform for export growth. Uh, if you build the capabilities, and a lot of companies in Ireland have demonstrated this, build your capability with the suppliers in Ireland, the, own, the owners in Ireland, you can then bring that into the export market and they'll bring you into the export market with them. So definitely a good opportunity there for, for to build ex export sales. As like I said, we put together a lot of, the report has a lot of information on specific uh, lists in terms of, you know, the data centers that are being constructed in terms of the key people that you want to contact and contact details. So if anybody needs any information on that, uh, please let me know. Thank you very much.